I grew up in the 80s and took to gaming at a young age. I remember playing Pitfall and other classics on my Atari 2600, and then it was on to the NES, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and well, you get the picture. Throughout my teens and into my early 20s, I played a lot of games. I tried to, and often did, play nearly all major releases across most platforms. I worked just enough to have enough money to own most major consoles, and as many students, my most readily available expendable currency was time. I poured hour after hour into single player games, acquiring Knights of the Round and defeating all the weapons in Final Fantasy VII, multiple times through the original Deus Ex, dozens of hours in Tony Hawk 3 completing every last challenge and creating my own skate parks, hundreds of runs down the Purple Mountain to chill tunes in SSX 3, so many great memories of finding refuge in long stretches of gaming sessions. It's the kind of thing that makes me feel nostalgic in a way that few other things do. But those days are gone. Chalk it up to age, lack of time, increase in responsibility, or anything else. But the bottom line is I am no longer able to find the time to regularly jump into extended gaming sessions. My game time has been on the decline since my mid-twenties, but my interest in games has never diminished. Not even a bit. In fact, I feel more engaged and informed than ever about what games are out there, coming out, and what they are. And I have the internet gaming video revolution to thank for that. I now spend more time watching games than playing them, and not by a small margin. It's pretty common for me to go two or three weeks without hitting the play button in Steam or a console power button, but I rarely go even a day without watching a game being played. We live in a world of quick looks, let's plays, and gameplay streaming. I get to see all the awesome games that are out being played and not have to worry about using my brain, dexterity, or money. I am drawn to Let's Plays in particular, and I use them as many do procedural TV shows, as a way to wind down at the end of the day. I love Game of Thrones and the newsroom, but sometimes I just want to throw on some Law and Order. So with that, let's take a look at why the age of gaming videos is great, where it works, and where it doesn't. It's relaxing. Sometimes you just want to plop down, turn your brain off, and watch something unfold. This has been the success of primetime TV for decades, and now games can occupy that space as well. Exposure to games I wouldn't otherwise play. Let's get this straight. I will probably never play the Dark Souls series. I don't have the patience or drive to make it through that slog, but they look amazing, and I want to see what they are all about. Now, thanks to people like Jeff Green, not only can I experience them almost in their entirety, but I get some grade A class comedy to go along with it. He's deliciously terrible at the games, and it's completely amazing. Seriously, go watch Jeff's archive series on YouTube. You won't regret it. It's completely free. I don't have to spend a dime, yet I can still see what almost any game is about. Nine years ago, at the launch of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, seeing what the next-gen gaming experience was like required hundreds of dollars. Not the case now. I have a PlayStation 4, but I waited on the Xbox One. Yet that didn't mean I couldn't see what the exclusives were all about. I've watched dozens of hours of Forza 5 and Titanfall, and I didn't have to drop any cash at all. I may have been out a lot more money to satiate that curiosity in previous console generations. The personalities. I touched on this before, and it's an intangible pull of Let's Plays and stream games. I love watching Dark Souls, but I also just love watching Jeff Green. I'm probably more invested in the personality in this specific case, and would watch him play almost anything. But even on YouTube, the LPers I keep on my subscription list are not the best players, but the most entertaining. I'm coming to these videos for fun, not to learn strategies or become a better player, so personality rules all. These are just some of the important aspects for me personally, but there are other cases where streaming may appeal, and that's the competitive scene. I come to my games to be immersed in different worlds and engage in crafted narratives, but for others, gaming is more about skill. MOBAs like Dota 2 and League of Legends are huge on Twitch, as are fighting games and to a lesser extent real-time strategy games. The audience for so-called eSports continues to grow, and Twitch is where it's doing the growing. But it doesn't work for every game type. The medium is uniquely suited to open-world games that rely on emergent gameplay. 
Games where the player is regularly creating their own micro-stories are where LPs are at their strongest. Games like Minecraft are among the shining examples of where the LP format works best, and unsurprisingly, are where I was introduced to the Let's Play phenomena. On the other end of the spectrum are linear, story-based, and narrative-driven experiences. I am much less interested in watching someone play through Mass Effect or any other role-playing game, really. I want to make those character decisions. I want to spec my character. I want to encounter new situations without the atmosphere of story beats and jeopardy of being ruined by stupid commentary, at least the first time. That said, I have gone back and watched a couple of my favorite LPers play through Skyrim after putting 150 hours into it myself, probably doubling my time with the game. I love watching LPs and to a lesser extent streams, but I have to admit that I do feel a slight tinge of gamer guilt. Here I am, making gaming content on the regular, speaking about the industry, and commenting with some authority on games themselves. And not only do I watch way more than I play, but I probably play significantly less than many of you watching this right now. Does that mean I don't love games? Does that mean I'm less qualified to talk about them? No. Well, no. Let's go with no. For those of you who don't watch any Let's Players on YouTube, here are a few of my favorites that may give you a jumping off point for seeing what the LP world is all about. Some of my favorites include Vintage Beef, Jeff Green, Doc M77, and our very own Echoside, Mike Fire. Seriously, even if you are not into Minecraft, give Mike's Flatland Adventures series a look. It's fun stuff. Oh, and I even dipped my toes in the Minecraft LP water. It was cold. So what does all this mean for the future of video games? Probably a lot, but that's a topic for another video. If you watch streams and LPs or create them, let me know what you like or dislike about them in the comments. I would love to hear your takes on the video games video phenomena. Also feel free to drop some links or usernames of some of your favorite Let's Players in the comments. I've been Jonathan Downing for Fish Tuxedo, thanks for watching.